Last week we was talking about how the new modern versions of the Bibles lessen, they diminish God's Word. They lessen, degrade it, make it less important. Um, and just layman's turn, they water it down. That's what they're doing, they're watering God's Word down. So, we talked about last week how they took Jesus out of several verses, even the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, these modern verses, they claim, well, they just took the D's and dials out and and uh, made it easier to read. Jesus is not a hard way to understand. Why they take out? So, but we're going to talk a little more today. You notice the bottom section there is holy. We're going to talk about where they took the word holy out of the Bible. Now, I'm on a handout right now. Oh, okay. Then we'll be on 44. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, uh, Brother Dave, Shepherd there. Uh, well, first of all, let me back up and in myself. If I was to ask you for the definition of holy, how would you define the word holy? What comes to your mind? Righteous. Righteous. Without sin. Without sin. Who's wrong? Give a perfect in the moral sense. We've heard perfect without sin. Righteous, perfect in the moral sense. Something set apart for sacred use. Moral. Show them a little more. Right. Okay. So holy is has a lot of good meanings to it. It, it means something. So Dave, read the uh, first Thessalonians five twenty seven. You you either have the handouts. You have the King James Bible. See what's different about it. Go ahead, Dave, read that for me. Well, as I look at First Thessalonians in the NIV here in the fifth chapter. Quicker back in. Looks like we, <coughs> verse 27, I, should have brought my other Bible. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. What kind of brothers? I left out the word holy, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, what, what did you say? Brad? We're on the handout, and we're on the bottom half okay. where it says holy. That's okay. So, no holy brethren, just brethren. Okay. Stan, read Revelations 22 6. You go to the next one. Now, they're reading out, he, they read out the NIV, Stan's reading out the ESV, English Standard Version. So now the prophets are holy. Kind of strange, isn't it? They read the next one there, right? Revelations 18 20. Revelation 18 and 20. Rejoice over her, O heaven. Rejoice, saints and apostles and prophets. God has judged her for the way she treated you. And here again, they took out holy apostles. Now this is an easy word to understand. Why do they take that for? It changes the meaning of it. Well, he does say God has judged you. Yeah, he does say God has abandoned you. Yeah. Which is different. Yeah. And the King James Bible. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Since you brought it up. No, that's fine. That's fine. You're making a great point. You're, you're getting it. I love it. Man it always says, context is king. That's right. <laughs> See, these words, these new versions, what they all claim to be, they claim, they claim to be easier to read, but they all claim to be more accurate. But that I, actually makes it more confusing by reading that because exactly. you can have, there were tons of apostles. There were apostles of like Greek gods back then. So which ones are they talking about? Right. Which apostles are they talking about today? Don't think that junk ain't happening today. Right. Which ones are they talking about? So the King James is right. No separation. King James is most accurate. Bible. It is the Bible. It's the Bible. It is the Bible. Okay. And you said it's it makes inspired it word of God. Confusing. I think it makes it more confusing because that's what they're trying to go with King James. Yeah. So as you noticed here, I'm kind of building up as a crescendo here. Start off with man. I'm up to what they read. Hey, they read that. Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heaven before him. Now we're talking about angels not being holy. Well, not just that, they changed shall to will, which means something different too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. She's right, she got that wrong thing. All right. Now, this next one, I want you to really think that's, about it. That's a good point, though. She made shallow and little two different things. Very different. Yep. Very different. That's a big point right there. But they, they're so slick because people don't take time to study, or maybe they've never read the King James Version. Maybe it's on the version they, they don't know about. That's how they trick people. We get them to follow. They're ignorant, right. and ignorance is not an insult. It's just unlearn. You don't know. Right. You don't know, you don't know. You know, the Bible talks about one word. Exactly. Even a place of a comma can change something there. And it's like doing this lesson. So I'm so trying to see. trying to open your eyes and how easily we can be fooled. Okay, and the last one. Stan read Second Peter one twenty one. So now who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith is, so far in God. is that Second Peter one twenty one? Let me see. I'm sorry, I had no first Peter. Okay, okay. I might blue blues too, so I might have someone here. I've already had one or two. For no prophet was ever produced by the will of man, but man spake from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So, what kind of man wrote the Bible? Holy men. Holy men. Hmm. That kind of makes it easier for these other translations to write your Bible, don't they? They don't have to be holy men to write their it's translations. Jesus, yeah. So now, if you they, you look on the front of your Bible, the very front cover of your Bible, what's the first few words down in the front of your Bible? Holy Bible. What's your say, Dan? Holy Bible. I don't believe it. Where's the holy at in the Bible? Now the word holy is in there, but they sure took it out a lot of places. Yeah, so, King James Bible, yes. Because they was holy men of God. Moved by the Holy Spirit. And God's breathing on them. Okay. Now, I've got another thing I want to show you here a little bit, and I'll come back to it. I'll get on a lesson. So let's go to 44 on your lesson sheet. I got some other stuff about Holy Ghost I want to show you. Okay, 44. We were talking last week about the translation committee of the King James Bible. How they were godly men above a reproach. They were admirable men. Translation committee. Now, 44 says, what was another thing that the translators did to show their integrity? When they wrote this Bible, there was something different about some of the words in there. They checked each other's words. 
Well, they did do that. I guess they're italicized. There's italicized words in there. The translators added a word. It wasn't in the original Greek and Hebrew. They added italicized words. Now, they added them for... Well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So, your answer is, what they shouldn't tell you? What they added, they, they italicized. So, it's, it's very transparent what they added. Okay? Now, why did they add italicized words? So we're going to talk about. To clarify and aid in the, in the reading. To clarify and aid in the reading. And, I'm going to give you examples here. They got those words from other scriptures. Now, to me, this is mind-boggling. I can't remember if I put this on the list. I did not. This, to me, is mind-boggling that I'm going to show you New and Old Testament verses. Okay? Uh, you can follow along in your Bible. Uh, everybody go to Psalm 16, 8. Go to Psalm 16, 8. I've got one, two, three, four, five examples I'm going to give you how they took words in the Old Testament or New Testament and they put them in the, the Old Testament to box them up. They tied them together. It's, it's amazing. I got these guys read the whole God's Word, those manuscripts, and they God gave them the knowledge to do this is just mind blowing to me. Okay, Psalm 16, 8. <clears throat> Somebody read that for me. I set the Lord's ways before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Alright, so not every Bible has italicized words. What word is italicized there? He. I got that from, I'm going to read, you'll turn there. Acts 8, or Acts 2 25 said, For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Makes sense, don't it? And they tied that together, so they put that in and make it more clear for us. It's just amazing. Go to Deuteronomy 25 4. Some of these italicized words, if you took them out, you wouldn't be able to understand. Try reading the Bible without italicized words. You'd be like, hey, great. Makes it very tough. Sometimes it's confusing. Amen. 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 Sounds like a good warning to me, don't you? Well, they said they the sure is. I've got that in there later on, but it's in there. That's good, but that's right. God warns about adding to and taking away, and they're guilty of both in these new versions. Okay, so Deuteronomy 25 4. Somebody read that verse for me. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. What words are italicized there? In the corn. Okay. Now, mind you, all these manuscripts and they find these words on top together. 1 Corinthians 9 9 says, For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for ox? There it is, tied again. They just didn't pull them out of there and make them up. So, let read Deuteronomy 8 3. Deuteronomy 8 3. This is actually one of the words that Jesus recited when he was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger. Yeah. Okay, what word is italicized in the King James Bible? Word. And I was talking about Jesus. Jesus said, Matthew 4, 4, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So here again, more evidence that they knew what they was doing. They was inspired. Psalms 8, 82, 6. Psalms 82, 6. Let me read that for me. I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. 
So what word are added here or downside? John 10, 34 says, Jesus answered him and said, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are God. Let me do one more and then I'll move on. To Isaiah 28, 16. Isaiah 28, 16. So that's the thing. The King James Bible, you cannot find contradictions in it. You can't find mistakes. I've done, in a few little bit of time I've thought this, I've shot holes on these verses already. Haven't I not? Yes. And I'm just getting started. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay my foundation stone, a tribe stone, a precious corner stone, and the tail side of the word is what? Stone. Stone. First Peter 2 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief corner stone, elect, precious, and that he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So I mean, now you think about these five scriptures, how they've got a tail size words in the New Testament. And they tied it with the Old Testament and vice versa. To me, that's amazing. That's just mind-boggling. They, that just shows how they was inspired to do that. God was with the translation committee put this King James Bible together. No man could do that on their own. I just don't think he could do it. Okay, now, these are Tyler words in these five scriptures we've read here. Verse, uh, question 46. There were some people that actually quoted these Tyler words. You got, you got Luke, Paul, John, Peter, and Jesus himself. They quoted these italicized words. Okay? Now, somebody read this. 47 says, what big mistake would be made if the translators did not add the italicized words to the following scripture? So let's go to 2 Samuel 21, 19, and somebody read that for me. those words out, you got a contradiction, you got a lie. The other versions took them out. I'll show you that later. Took them out. So you can get, if you want a reference to prove where they got their italicized words from, you go to 1 Samuel 17, 15, 51, and it tells you the brother of. So they got it from another source. They got it from the source. Now, here's something that's kind of fascinating. <clears throat> 48. Has there ever been any archaeological fi findings to prove accuracy of the Talsal's words added by the King James translators? And it's yes. I love when they archaeologists dig up something to prove the Bible. It, it, I just love that. Don't you? I mean, it's just so cool. So let's go to 1 John 2.23. Which was recently the Dead Sea Scroll. Not recently, but... Remember they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. Not just that, there's some more than what you realize. Sure. I mean, there's actually more evidence to prove that the Bible was real than to prove that Alexander the Great ever existed. There's amazing facts about the, the blood that proves the blood happened. Yeah. All right. So I read 1 John 2 23. Okay. Now, it's a pretty good verse, isn't it? You notice how about the last half of it's all italicized? Notice that? In 1840, a Greek manuscript was found that the translators didn't have it. Rachel King James Bible 1611. That's when it came out. I just told you to answer the next question. 
So in 1840, they found this Greek manuscript and it matched word for word as Italicized words. Is that not amazing? That's amazing. 49, what year was the King James Bible published? 1611, I just told you. <laughs> scriptures about the Holy Ghost being removed uh, from, the, from the modern versions. Now, 1 Corinthians 2.13 Did you read that for me? Which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Or in spiritual things and spiritual. Now, my question is, they're not different spirits? Yeah, but you can use the Holy Out. That could be any kind of spirit. Exactly. I mean, how many people were possessed? Exactly. Here again, show more accuracy the King James Bible. That's vague. That's vague in his mind. What kind of spirit? Yeah, what spirit? It's not That's not even. And what? And what's the Bible say? God's not the author of what? Confusion. <laughs> Amen. I think if, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And we just right. stick with the same book. Amen. I'm still trying to get my way through it. I don't want any other. Well, you know, if you leave holy out, it could be a holy spirit or an unholy spirit. Exactly. It could be a demonic spirit. Yeah, it could be for God or against God. Exactly. Now, uh, stand good Acts 6-3. While well, he's going there, I'll read the King James Bible. It says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among seven men of honest report for the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Okay? For the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Stand, what's your Bible say? Acts 6 3. Therefore, brothers, seek out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, and we will appoint the Spirit. Here again, they replace the Holy Ghost and Spirit. Alright, now you'll love this next one. They go to Matthew 12 31. Go to Matthew 12 12 31. King James Bible says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. They what's your Bible say? Uh, the NIV, Matthew 12, and verse 31 says, And so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Wow, now if you blaspheme any spirit, you won't be forgiven. Well, that's a big difference. Well, will and shall will. Yeah. Or shall to will, rather. So, so because the, the big difference between shall and will is shall is almost like it must. Will is hmm, it might or it might not. That's what that's implying. That's why it's such a big deal between shall and will, because will doesn't necessarily mean that it'll happen. It's like it might happen. That's like I talked about shit and shall. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Even the Holy Ghost is really tremendous. Yeah, here you are. You're not allowed to speak against people's spirits, according to this verse. Why do they look at that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. 
That's right. Well, it just shows again that God's word divides and elects. Man's word does not. They try to unite what's whole, unholy with the holy. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening in the other versions of the Bible. You're uniting what is unholy with what is holy. At least they're trying to. I mean, I think we can all agree our, our society is going down the tubes. And it's I, like they rewritten it to serve their needs or their, their objectives. <laughs> I, I would tell you why the problem is, is the Bibles are using. That's why the Spiritual problem. weakness and high flesh. Yeah. And it's on purpose because that's how like they get people to follow them to the death. I mean, look, look, we went over this right off the bat in the lesson. What was the first thing the devil tried to see me with? The word of God. Had God said. Okay? Now, the devil. He's slick. He makes it a little bit of truth and a little bit of lies. It's like they're doing with these other, ver other versions. They put a little bit of words in there that are right, and they change a whole lot of other words to kind of pull them in and suck them. So it kind of sounds the same. Like it's familiar. If you didn't read, you could be easily led astray by somebody that was preaching kind of like what the Bible said. Do people not do the same thing, though? Leave part of it out? A story or a witness or something. Uh, well, I'm not going to lie, but I'm not going to say that part. Really? Well, the people, if they're telling the official story, they're not trying to lead masses in the wrong direction for salvation. Who caught the biggest fish you were in? Depends on who's telling the story. That's exactly right. But if we tell a fishing story, we're not leading the masses astray. Uh, he just saying it's, it's deception. It's, it's still deception. Yeah, these modern versions are if full of deception. It's, 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 it's deception. <laughs> <laughs> he's telling the truth. If we remember back to when the disciples went to Christ privately and said, what will be the indicators of the signs of basically the end? The first thing the Lord said, take heed that no man deceives. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking at here, this is not anything that I would ever hold near in my heart as an accurate biblical scripture. Um, this is a distortion of the true gospel. That's why, like, you know, so I know what you're saying. You just want to say what I'm going to say. These modern Bibles are counterfeit. You take a counterfeit dollar bill or a $50 bill, uh -huh. to that and train eyes, it looks about the same, doesn't it? If you don't know your Bible, untrained, you're going to be easy to see, easily trick. That's what they play with. Maybe some people up there where you're standing right now aren't purposely trying to see people. No. Maybe they're um, using all these Bibles for reference, which I can understand. You want to study them. True. And then you don't realize when you get up there, you're quoting something from one of the ones that you studied the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Instead of coming straight out of the Bible, this is the Bible. So maybe some of it is not purpose deception. Well, like I say, if somebody, if somebody, okay, a lot of times when somebody's a new Christian, a lot, a lot of people give them a gift, they give them a Bible. Okay? So a lot of people might have a, a version that gives them as a gift, and they read them, study that version for years. They don't have a clue what's not right in that Bible. They're being very easy to see, because they just don't know it. Me and Steph's talked about this before. There's anybody in this church, this is how strong we feel. If you're in this church that doesn't have a King James Bible, you can't pull one, they want one, you tell me, Steph, we'll go buy you one. Whack it. So, Say, if you love me, what? Which means obey, right? That's how you say love God. 
Okay. Now, I'll leave you this verse on this little section here. 1 John 4, 1 says, believe it. Now, this is why when they took the Holy Spirit out, Holy Ghost, they took the word out, the Spirit there. 1 John 4, 1 says, believe, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So we're giving a warning here to test and try the spirit, because they're not all good. They're not all of God. Okay, and I'm showing you that. Okay. Um, now, we talked about God diminishing, about these other versions, diminishing God's word. I've got two scriptures I want to read to you. That God warned about diminishing from his word or commandments. I've got two scriptures I just want to throw at you. Deuteronomy 12, 32 says, What things shall I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. So diminish is a Bible word. Jeremiah 26, 2 says, Thus saith the Lord, stand in the courts of the Lord's house, and speak unto all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in the Lord's house. All the words I have commanded you to speak unto them, diminish not a word. God's serious. He's serious about his word. He don't want to mess with it. Now, I'm going to ask you this. So they're watering down God's word, these new verses. When you water down God's word, what can be the effects of that? His power. Exactly. Power is different kinds of power. Power, one power to fight off Satan, right? Because you don't know all your weaponry. Like they took out fasting. That's a powerful weapon for us, right? And also, what about um, when somebody's uh, Holy Spirit's moving on somebody to get saved? What do we call that? Well, conviction, that's what I was looking for. You're taking some of the power of conviction out of God's word and you're watering it down, are you not? So you're losing conviction power. And then, of course, it loses accuracy. When you water it down, it loses accuracy. I think when there's conviction, ain't nothing can take it away from you. So no matter what you're watering down, to me, conviction, you're going to be up there on your knees and crying like a baby if you got conviction. No matter what anybody's watching. True, but maybe a little harder with these lines. <clears throat> True, but maybe a little harder with these new versions. <laughs> well, that is, that's not just That's yeah, my point. It's just, it's not the same thing. <clears throat> right. I mean, because in the new version, if you take out the Holy Spirit, you're supposed to die. If you take out Jesus' name, then who's supposed to save you? Who's supposed to comfort you when you're in trouble? Holy men didn't write the Bible, and what kind of men did? Well, we know what kind of men wrote these other versions. Uh, false manuscript. There's, there's two guys that's behind this modern version. Not all of them. And we're going to go in later. There's so much in this lesson. I just, I get excited. I hope it ain't too boring for you, but I don't see it. it's really interesting to me to get to learn about it. Just go ahead and tell them who was on the board. He just told me this yesterday. Who was on the board? You know how the King James Bible had all those. Well, the IV, like, I'm, she's getting ahead, and I don't prepare to talk about this, so I'll just give you a tip of it, okay? We'll get a little more detail later. They had a man that's professing homosexual on the NIV board, okay? Translating committee board. And you had a lady that was a, her career was a teacher. And she was an advocate for um, lesbians, transgenders, and all this stuff. She was on, the, she was a, like the co chair. Of that committee. Yeah. Writing, that writing the other version. Is that why they tried to come up with this scam that King James was homosexual? Well, that, that was. Well, we're going to get in that. Because Hang it tight. sounds like that might be behind that part. That um, question 65. We'll get in all that on question 65. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go there. Well, you said those things, I'm just saying that's probably what's behind it. But see, that's why they watered it down. They don't want to be offensive for the homosexuals and the transgenders, so they water it down. That's what I'm saying. Well, I was thinking maybe they did that, that you know, thing came out 
Well, any way they can, they're going to try. But like I said, you can't you can't poke holes in the King James Bible like these others. You can't do it. No, he was not. Okay, let me do one or two more. I'm going to cut it off. No, no, not yet. She's going to get right to it, I guess. No, he was not gay. There's your answer to 65. <laughs> okay. Question 50. <laughs> 66 books of the Bible. It's 39 Old Testament, 27 New Testament. 51. How many years did it take for King James transfers, translators to complete the Bible? What's the number represents God in our ways? Seven. It took seven years. They started in 1604 and it was published in 1611. Mm -hmm. Perfection. Completion. It's kind of funny that uh, some of these other translation committees, they just happen to do seven years too. Trying to make it look good. I said, there's a, there's a guy on YouTube, I mean, my goodness, what he does in number seven to the Bible just blows your mind. And it's, nobody ever tried to teach or explain here because it makes my head skin, but man, it's pretty neat. Okay, <clears throat> um, 52, and I'm going to stop here because I want to get into the Apocrypha a little bit, talk about the Apocrypha that I don't have time to get into today. In 52, I don't know if you've ever heard, what does the word canon of the scriptures mean? Somebody says the canon of the scriptures. What's that mean? I really never heard that word until I went to the last church I went to. Okay, in layman's term, it's a collection of sacred books accepted as genuine. A collection of sacred books accepted as genuine. We just talked about, we got 66 books in this Bible, right? And we all believe they're sacred and genuine, don't we? Well, we shouldn't read it. That's what I feel about it. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is God's Word. This is a canon of Scripture. Okay? Now, next next week, or next time I tell I go at Danity sometime, I can't hold it all the time, but uh, we're going to talk about the potter and why they're not in the canon of the Scriptures. Okay? So, that's the next thing I'm going to take up with. So, if anybody got anything, I'm going to stop there for today. Thank you. Ezra was at Carl's uh, funeral. We're going to get to hear this again. But she asked me to uh, sing, so this is what I practiced, so we're going to do it again. God bless. Ready?
<laughs> Glad to see him go. Have you had a good time this far? Anybody's got any plugs for tires or anything? Once you start bringing them with you, I tell you, it was a good testimony. After all that, you can still praise the Lord. You really have it, don't you? God bless. You. Like the old guy said about the lawnmower, he uh, couldn't get the lawnmower running. He just bought and he called the guy about the used lawnmower. He said, uh, "Can't get it to start." He said, "Oh God!" He told you. He said, "You got to cuss that lawnmower." <laughs> that guy said, "I don't cuss." He said, "You keep cranking it. <laughs> It'll come back to you." <laughs> God forgive me. Just a little pun. I love you, church. I, I'm going to kind of follow up on some of the lesson that Dovel taught on and, and uh, Wednesday, and I thought we had a real good service. I'm thankful for the numbers that come up. I, I mean, it's all about Jesus and the family and the friends. I'm thankful for that. But I want to use the word, first of all, all. All. And... All things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to His person. Person. Perfect. Amen. I knew He'd get it there. <laughs> that wasn't in the revised version, though. <laughs> and I use, I use that to say God builds a church to complete. It's not like a part here is left out or part, the, the Spirit of God makes us a continued, gives us parts of the body of the church to make it a complete church. And when I bring this to, to life, uh, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for the deeds we've do, done or do in the body, good or bad. That's all. Now, that's not saying just all the church, but that's all, are going to stand in judgment. No exclusion, but we're all going to be just according to His Word and the truth. So, I use a few scriptures that probably were mentioned uh, earlier today, but all scripture, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen. Now, and one of the points that was brought out is if we get out of the scriptures, we're getting out of maybe God's plan in a slow process of time. With all the scripture that is inspired from God, some of it is very profitable. Not, I'm not saying there's not intermediate parts, but all scripture is profitable. When you learn the scripture or you learn the part that's good for you, especially the part of forgiveness, then it becomes very profitable in your life. Now, he doesn't say about the riches of the world, but he says you will have more than you ever asked for. Amen. Right. And I find that in the Christian life, when we accept and believe in God, it becomes very profitable. Not always what we do, but we don't do what we used to do. Amen. And therefore we profit spiritually and also many times in other things with families and friends. It becomes greater with a friendship. But along with things becoming profitable, he also says there's reproof and correction. <coughs> uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding, they say. But to reprove is that he proves what he says he does. He proves that God is who he is, that his son Jesus does what he says he'll do. There's proof when you're converted, that's been mentioned, when you believe in God, there's proof in your life now that you got what God had to give. That you got the Spirit of God in your life because it changes this natural body, though not physically, but into a spiritual part that makes your body move in a different place in a different way. He will make you move and have your being in Christ Jesus. God, I 
feel good? <laughs> you know, when, when the Lord comes in, He gives you instructions in righteousness. How to do things right. My goodness, if you ever built something and left something out or, or maybe cut the wrong board or something that just didn't fit, Butch is just grinning and Ethel's right along with him. Yeah. Cut but, twice and measure once. That's what he's doing. Okay, God bless. <laughs> yeah, God bless you. Now let's get back to the same thing in the scripture. What we've been taught here in the past few services is Maybe the biblical questions that come up, maybe some people just got the wrong instructions. Maybe with this uh, Bible, not a maybe about the Bible that I read in Revelation and some other parts of the Scripture, but he used a term that I also had jotted down in my notes, watered down. This gospel is true, and every man a liar, he said. The truth will set you free, right? So if you add some part of it, just as you went back to Genesis, when uh, was tempted, when he was tempted, he left out a part, or maybe there's a part added. So we have to be really careful, really, really careful what thus saith the Lord, not what thus saith the man. Now I I do have some other versions of the Bible that I refer to, but that don't make it etched in stone. There's a lot of definitions that I often have to look up to try to understand myself. But God, by the Spirit, gives you the Spirit to discern good and evil. That's what we have to have in our life in this world today is that we have to have a strong function in our life. What is righteous, not just right for the time, but what is our righteousness compared to evil? Well, I like to do it right, don't you? I like to have it right. So sometimes we have to look that all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. And I'll tell you something about being called in the ministry. I believe there's a lot of people in the ministry these days, they call ministers that are not ministers. I'm not being judgmental, but when you get away from the scripture that sets us free, that saves our soul, and to help others, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And if that scripture is left out in a sermon, in a message, and it's all just be buddy, buddy, friendly, friendly, God's not in it. The truth is what sets us free. And it's written right here in the Bible. The truth is what tells us where we are and how we're living our life and the hope of eternal life. The purpose, you cannot mix righteousness with unrighteousness. Now, these lessons that we've listened to and the testimonies I'm saying, you cannot mix good and bad and have the truth. The righteousness of God is handed down to the righteousness of individuals. Just do it righteously as the best we can. God is not a fault finder, but if you have a fault, He is willing to help you that you might get rid of, be forgiven of. If you confess your faults, He's willing to forgive you of faults. And I, I kind of separated the word of Sin and fault. You know, sometimes things happen that don't go just exactly right. And, and I've heard somebody say, well, that's my fault. But most generally, the wife will say, that's your fault. <laughs> Stick with me now. I'm going to tell the truth. Eh? <laughs> yeah. I just had to throw it out there. I know it's not in Revelation, but... I like how she just sat there with her mouth shut. I think he didn't hear what I said. Now, brother, brother Roger here brought out some real good scripture in the lesson this morning in Revelation in verse in 22, 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words 
of this prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto the plagues that are written in the book. That's what it says. That's what was brought out, right? Did you ever wonder why there's so much disease in the world today? Did you ever figure out that there was something that was coming up in the world today that would be that would be called AIDS? Or something in the world today that people say, oh, everything's all right, or all the sickness. Look, I'm not saying because you're sick or, or old or going to die like the Bible says that you've sinned. But look out into the world. I believe just as the time of Egypt was that God has added the plagues to this world today. My. You know what? One of the things that I had that I don't have now was sin sick. Sin sick. When I realized who God was and to believe in Jesus Christ, then I realized I was sick of sin. I was sick of it. I didn't want any more of it. If I could just get by in life, be forgiven, thank God for that. But he made me a journey of life that's a better journey than I've ever lived in my whole life. Amen. He'll give you things you didn't even ask for that are better for you than the things you thought were good for you in life. I tell you, God is real. He talked about the the King James Version and or version, or as being said, the King James Bible. Amen. And these other versions of Bible that have come out, we need to be careful. It's got good to study. Show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to learn what the other enemy is trying to do to your salvation. You need to know that the devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy, take away your salvation. But I'll tell you what God's made free. It's free indeed. Don't try to step on me, you devil. I know you've got some power, but according to the word, we have all power in heaven and in earth. The power of God when you get it in your life. Bless His holy name. I mean bless His holy name. Not just the name, but the holy name of Jesus Christ, the blessed Son of God. Amen. Bless His name. Why? Need not to be ashamed. You know, all Scripture, this whole book, is given to us by the inspiration of God. This Spirit of God, as I said in, in Revelation 22, the other verse says, And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, any man, you might add, put an ad or an ad lib or maybe miss a scripture, but I tell you, don't take away Jesus out of this book. Don't take Jesus Christ out of this book. Don't take the Son of God out of this book. Don't, don't add live and put something in there just to make it up or, or put another word in there. Look, if you add or take away from this book, your judgment is coming up on you that you're going to be punished for not telling the truth. Amen. God shall take away His part out of the book of life. Out of the holy city. Ah, oh, the book of life. Man, from the things that, uh, that are written in this book, this, this is the Bible. Thank God for it. You know, uh, I've heard people say and do a lot of things that I, I don't believe in. But I know this. When Jesus was on the cross, there were some things said, and, and he asked for, uh, uh, they gave you the vinegar and, and we look, but I'll tell you what he said. It's finished. All things concerning me from the birth to the witness to the teaching, the preaching to the crucifixion, when he bowed his head, he said, it's finished. All things concerning what he sent me for, it's finished. But then again, he said, I'll be the beginning and the end. Yeah, I started, I, I tell you, the Word of God started in Genesis, and it's not done yet. That's right. Because there's something left yet to come. That's the one that ascended 
into the heavens. He said, I'll go away, but until I come again, I'm going to give you a comforter. That's called that Holy Spirit. That's what we need to discern good and evil. That's what gives us the Spirit of God in our life while the world is trying to change the trans spirit. That. Yeah. Yeah, he has to. You know, Romans 4, when they questioned the Apostle Paul, he said, what, uh, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. When we believe God more than man, be not deceived. Whatsoever you sow, you shall surely reap. And the world out here today has gotten so much into the world, I tell you, we this music just give me Jesus loves me, this I know. If it ain't him, the rest has got to go. <laughs> That stuff they got out there today, God bless you. I love my, uh, my granddaughter. I do. And she was picking some songs today coming down on the, in the car. God bless her. I think she's with me. And uh, for this softball stuff, they're going to give a song for a special person, whatever they pick. And they wasn't the one of them I understood. <laughs> Think about the singing today. How many of us do understand what is the good old gospel religion? Or the good old gospel just as I am? The good old gospel of amazing grace. What happened to the good old gospel? Good old gospel. I tell you, I like the truth. And the Bible says the truth will set you free. We need to be careful. We need to be wary. That the devil is out seeking whom he may devour. Just tell me the truth. Nothing but the truth. I'll tell you, I tried to watch some of this witnesses on the stand here lately. They're banging Trump and Trump's bouncing them and all this political stuff. My God, could somebody just tell me the truth? <laughs> What we need to uh, hear about the truth is to have the Holy Spirit. I've heard enough about, look, I, okay, I'll be careful. <laughs> it does shut me up sometimes like it. A lot of times, in even my discussions with other pastors and ministers, I'm not going to say that people don't have an opinion or a thought like Wesley. <laughs> but there are some things I just don't understand. And one will say there's a thousand years. One will say the Lord's coming back the second time without sin and the salvation. I understand that. That's all, that's all a good conversation. But one thing I do know is that the Lord is coming back. And I know He's coming back the second time without sin and the salvation. I know when He went away, He said, if I go not away, I can't come again. So when I go away, you shall see me, I'll come again, and every eye shall see me. I can't tell you about a thousand years here or, or the two thousand plus since He was crucified, but I can tell you I know He's coming back. Amen. And I know He's going to split the eastern sky. And I know there's going to be a judgment day when he's going to judge the world in righteousness. I know that he's going to hear, we're going to hear either enter in or depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know that. I know what I do know. I know I had to ask him to forgive me my sins. 
that I could believe in him that he was faithful and just to forgive me of my sins if I ask him. I know what I know. And what I don't know may be a whole lot more. But I know he saved me because I'm not a drunk anymore. Amen. I know he saved me because I don't buy and sell drugs anymore. Amen. Matter of fact, I got the wrong stuff at the prescription store. I, I'm afraid to even give them away. <laughs> Lord, if I flush those a fish lot, I'll jump out on the riverbank. God help us. If you don't believe it, ask Joy. <laughs> Did you lock them up to keep her out? I locked them up. I love you. So I love you. Life is good. Life is good. I can remember part of what I did yesterday. Before I was saved, I couldn't remember none of what I did yesterday. That's right. Life is good. Because he said he came to give me life. And to have it more abundantly. I even like feel, you know, I feel sorry for y'all because of all that trouble you had. But God, I'm glad I got to know you. I didn't even think about it. This is Isaiah. What do you say? You're the second Isaiah. Yes, can we not say that God is good? God is good. I love God. He loved me. I love Him because He first loved me. When we pass from death unto life because we love the brother. I'm thankful that God gave us a church. That He gave us all something we could do and enjoy our salvation. The salvation. And I believe He's coming back. I understand that much. And I know nobody can tell me that he didn't save me from my sin. Amen. Nobody can tell me that. He took away the things that I couldn't give up when I really wanted to and knew they were bad for me. Maybe just the smallest thing. Maybe it's that language. Maybe it's that part that she's like, uh, thank you, God. Right? You all been there. Yes. It wasn't just me. When you're taught not to say I'm sorry, you say, God, forgive me. I'm really sorry. This is what the Holy Spirit does for us. And it's come into our life if you ask. Him. If you ask Jesus to come into your life, don't leave Jesus out of this thing. And if you was baptized when you was a little baby, don't be afraid of the water when you get older. <laughs> it got you wet then. It'll help keep you saved now. <laughs> Baptism. I believe in it. Wow. I just like it. Don't you like being in a place where there's joy? Y'all quit worrying about everything out there. Except for Kay in a wrecked car. God bless her. I don't miss much. But we're alive today. We're still in this world today, right? I'm preaching up front because he couldn't hear good. But I know he hears me because he's going like it. We're in this together. We're friends. We're family. Yes. Just tell me the truth. Nothing but the truth. Don't get on the witness stand. Oh, my. My. That lawyer took off with that other lawyer and spent all that money. She got all anxious to go on the witness stand and go up there. They said she got her dress on back. <laughs> and that's a hurry. I don't know if she dressed in the mirror or against the wall. <laughs> you gotta love me. You gotta love me. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Put you on a solid rock where you can stand against the wind and the storms. 
the water, but he'd come down with the power. Man, I love it. If there's anything better in this world, which I know there isn't, I'd have drank it a long time ago. I'm saved by grace, through faith, not in myself. Whoa, it's a gift of God. I didn't even thought. <laughs> Can't hardly get up and get around the house. Thank God for Jesus. Boy, you're just a smile at you. Ain't you? God love you. Dog will bite her all hugged up. Somebody's going to steal Stephanie because she's the same. <laughs> is that not what the church is here for? Amen. You're here with these babies? You could have been a lot of other places. God bless your heart. The Lord dealt with you to be here for whatever reason, whoever made you come. <laughs> You're still here. Oh, I love you. I love you. Can you hear me, Opal? Yes. <laughs> oh, first thing, you don't ask me, T, if you can hear you. You just say, do you have your hearing aids in? <laughs> We're a family. Amen. We bear one another's burdens. We pass from death unto life. We love one another. But the Spirit of God, through Jesus Christ, when He went away, said He would give me a gift. And it is the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. Not just the Spirit, as mentioned, but a Holy Spirit that will lead me and guide me into righteousness. Church, let's just do it right. Let's just, if you're a non-believer or one that needs prayer or move up a little closer, that's what church is for. That's what God sent His Son for. For the communion service we have, He set the table. It's come and die. If you're a believer in Christ Jesus, if you're a believer in the blood sacrifice, if you're a believer in the bread, Jesus being the bread of life, take the communion. I don't care. Well, I do care about that. But if you're not a member, you still take the communion if you're a believer. I know some, like a fella said, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth whether the church likes it or not. And he said that big old bodyguard throwed him over his shoulder and he said on his way out he was still telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give God a great big hand.